Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week, I am joined by Eric Levendusky for a game of Jared Sorensen's Lacuna, Part 1. The creation of the mystery and the girl from Blue City. Eric is the host of Once Upon a Game, a really cool Twitch stream where he live plays all sorts of story games with a host of wonderful people. It is a lot of fun. You should absolutely check it out. You can find that at twitch.tv slash ericvulgaris, a link to which can be found in the show notes. Lacuna is about mystery agents in the Blue City, tracking down hostile personalities in an endless cosmopolitan space that is the sun information redacted clearance level deep blue required and spiders it's really cool a link to the game can be found in the show notes and with all that out of the way let's throw it over to me in the past so he can get started with the show take it fast me thanks future me this week i am joined by eric levendusky eric thank you for coming on party of one hey thanks jeff i'm happy to be here man i'm so excited to play games with you Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a super good time. Um, so up front, why don't you introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you've got going on, any projects you want to talk about, that kind of thing? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm Eric Lemondusky. I go online uh, by the, the handle Eric Vulgaris. Uh, I do a lot of streaming role-playing games online, uh, specifically story games and indie RPGs, um, mostly just like the small press kind of stuff. Uh, I follow the the kind of template that uh, Story Games Seattle kind of given has given out there uh you know play one shots we're just going to be creating something and we're going to do it safely because your safety is is super important yes yes it is i like the games you play a lot i i think they are fun i enjoy watching them oh thank you so much i love your games <laughs> all right it was yeah. yeah seeing your game of mars colony was like oh so good oh uh, that's a good one too like i, I like that episode a lot so this week we are playing Lasuna by Jared Sorensen, and I'm super excited about it. It is a weird, it is a weird game about mysteries and mystery agents and a, a city that is full of questions that don't have answers. And I'm so excited to just dive into it. Are you are you oh. are you ready to dive into it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so many people have been telling me that this game is kind of like Inception in a way. And yes. I don't know much about this game at all. I didn't have the opportunity to read the book. <laughs> uh, I was at Go Play instead of reading the book. I, um, I, I think game. it actually makes <laughs> Lasuna much better if you haven't read the book or know. Or the yeah. less you know, like going into it, the more I know that you don't, the much better I think the yeah. experience gets. Totally. It's and I love Jared's other games. Like, I absolutely adore Inspectors. Love it. Oh, Inspectors so is great. Yeah. I actually played it for the first time at Dexcon a few weeks ago, like proper. I'd watched a couple things of it, and but I'd never gotten to like properly play it. And I played it for the first time and it was amazing. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Uh, it's great. All right. So let's dive in. OK. First thing I need from you is a roll of a percentile dice. OK, 51. 51. Oops. Up the table. Did you say 51? Correct. <laughs> Agent Killer, it is a pleasure. Um, thank you for coming in. We <laughs> just wanted to have a, br you know, go through a few brief questions, make sure that everything is okay before we dive into, before we get to the business at hand. I, thank you for coming in so early on a Monday morning. Uh, do you need coffee or anything? Are you good? We know you can't, we don't allow food before a jump, but if you need black coffee, we can provide. Oh, excellent. I only take my coffee black. Perfect. Um, yes. So um, we wanted to briefly survey your – survey your uh, – the reports of your uh, performance testing as an agent. Uh, there are three tested categories for mystery agents within the company. They are force, which measures your ability to survive the physical nature of jumps into the city. There is instinct, which allows you, which is equal parts deductive ability and ability to follow gut hunches, which is very important because sometimes the city is a little bit tricky. And access, which is your ability to get logistics and intelligence and navigation within the city and get help from control once you're inside. So those are your three abilities. On a scale from two to four, keeping in mind that you – that. 
your average agent has nine points allotted to them. Where would you rank each of these three abilities with to, with to a minimum of two and a maximum of four? Well, I received highest marks in my instinct uh, okay. during training, uh, followed up by access. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, though, my um, since since my previous missions left me a little bit wounded, my, my force is the worst. So uh, four, three, two. Okay, perfect. Right. Yeah. Two, f- two, four, three. Two, four, three. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, what would you say within any of the three categories? What would you say your best talent is? Would you say it is aggression, athletics, strategy, investigation, communication, intuition, logistics, intelligence, or navigation? Uh, intuition. All right. So under instinct. So when. Um, Making intuition rolls with instinct, you can use that talent, and we will come up. And we'll discuss how that goes later. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Okay, make me now. Make me a um, agent killer. Um, let me ask you, who was your uh, mentor? Make me a d tw- uh, Make me a two d ten roll as we determine who your mentor was, and that will give you some special techniques. Okay. Uh, ten ten. So twenty. Ah, you're ah, your mentor, Vice Director Forrester. Excellent. Let me pull up techniques so I can tell you exactly what you can do. Director, uh, Vice Director Forrester and I go way back. Yes, yes, he takes a very active uh, hand in overseeing overseeing younger uh, green level agents as they make their transition into blue. So you're you 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 were in good hands. He's very popular around the office. Ah, okay. Yes, so. What you get for that is that because he is still alive, which is which cannot be said about all of the the mentors around the office. Sadly, of course, you can reach out. You can, with a successful access roll, get a hold of him through a designated uh, payphone or rotary phone. In addition to contact and control, you can contact him directly to provide you with uh, additional information, guidance, that sort of thing. Oh, okay. And then um, after some successful missions, he, you know, um, students of Forrester tend to take on some special techniques that uh, with hope with hopefully with some successful missions, you'll be able to, to showcase some new skills. I'm hmm? <laughs> oh, looking forward to it. OK, next up, could you fill out the, on the form your age, which is to say roll me 1D20 and then 2D10 and then give me the 2D10 and the, the D20 separately. Okay. Uh, the 20 was 2, and the 2d10 separately was 5-1. So you're 25. So, young. We welcome that sort of youthful exuberance. Write down that your resting heart rate, or your maximum heart rate is 195 beats per minute. Your target heart rate is 98 beats to 146 beats per minute. And your resting heart rate is 70. Uh, could you repeat my target heart rate uh, range again for me? Absolutely. Um, for a 25-year-old male, it is 98 to 146. And as you know, um, for mystery agents inside the city, it is less of a concern. There's no real physical danger so much as there is danger of your heart rate exceeding – your target level exceeding into danger and causing panic attacks, catatonia, death – etc so forth the usual things and i believe that is it for the mechanics as the final um phases of our screening process i wanted to ask you a few questions to develop a basic psych profile you know no press standard procedure first question and i get a lot of eye rolls at this but i have to ask it because you never know you see a turtle on the beach you, you flip it onto its back. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about it. I helped uh, help the turtle. Great. You're not a replicant. We appreciate <laughs> knowing that. We get yes, the void comp is a uh, standard. You know, we get a lot of we get a lot of laughs about it, but we we do need to to confirm because if we were to send a replicant into the city, who knows what would happen? Chaos. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to show you an image and just tell me what you see. What's the first thing that you see in this image? I see a skull. Skull. 
perfect. A human skull. Perfectly normal. Same question? Dancing Bears. Dancing Bears. What's the last movie that you saw? Uh, The last movie uh, that I have seen was uh, Terminator 2. Terminator 2. There's those robots again. Yep. What's the last song that you listened to? Ooh. uh, Genghis Khan by Mike Snow. Okay, um, this all seems perfectly normal. Um, I think that we're ready to go. If you'll follow me back into the jump into the jump air uh, the slab area, we'll get you wired up, wired up, bound to the slab, and we'll be ready to make our jump. Excellent. All right, so you are walked through this bland gray office. And you arrive and a medical uh, test it like a medical, like an operating room, basically. There is a single, a single like concrete doctor's chair in the middle of the room. There are manacles at, at the wrist and ankles. Um, you are laid down. You, they put in an IV. You, you feel yourself going under and closing your eyes and you wake up. In a verdant green field, there is a payphone in front of you. The breeze is blowing. It is a perfectly calm day. Do I hear the sounds of any animals or anything like that? Birds chirping? Except- yes, you hear birds chirping. You look up like you don't see them, but you hear the birds chirping almost as if you want there to, you you think that there should be birds and almost on cue you hear a light chirping in the distance uh, the payphone starts to ring uh, how far away is the payphone it's 10 feet Just right 10 feet right in front yeah pretty yeah. pretty right in front of you cool i uh i quickly run over to the payphone to answer it you hear a familiar voice, one that you you don't know the name you don't know the name of, but you recognize the voice. This is your designated uh, mythography consort here to refer referred to as control. All mystery agents are designated uh, a, a specific mythography agent to guide them through, answer any access requests, that sort of thing. Roger. Hey, killer! I love that name, bro. What's Thanks. What's up, Control? Um, yeah, just giving you the heads up. The four one one on the on the mission. Standard, um, standard hostile personality uh, retrieval. Um, the real nasty sort. Looks like a um, looks like a serial arsonist lit up a few tenements on the lower, like on the lower side of town. Um, not really, yeah, no real, uh, family or friends. Went by the name Horace Albertson. He was an electrician by day, which explains how he was able to light up the buildings without anybody noticing. Yeah, so be on the lookout for electrical displays, burning buildings, obvious signifiers of heat, that kind of thing. Maybe be on the lookout for like rundown apartments. See if that might be a place where he's hiding. Yeah, it sounds like his. Okay. Any 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 he, questions? Yeah. Uh, so it seems like our uh, our electrician has has kind of given up on being an electrician and does does the arson full time. Ye- like has- yeah, it seemed like he was maintaining he was maintaining his job as an as a, an electrician doing repair works on these tenements for like landlords. He was like an independent contractor electrician, but and he was going in, messing with things in a way that no one no, like that no one was noticing because he was an independent contractor, and the buildings were light would light up. So it's a standard retrieval. Track him down. Um, plant the Lasuna device on him. Turn it to the right. You know, normal stuff. How you doing? How was your weekend? Oh, my weekend was fantastic. I was out with the wife. Uh, we went fishing up at uh, at Lake Minnetonka. It was fantastic. Oh, that sounds awesome. Thanks for asking. That sounds job. awesome. All right. So um, if you have any other questions about what about what uh, you're looking for going in, let me know. 
If not, we can we can make the jump into blue. How old? Uh, yeah. How old's Horace? Oh yeah, that's probably helpful to know. Um, Physical description. Yeah, he was about forty six. Pudgy, bald, mustache. Had a like a scar on his forehead. Looks like a looks like a from an old burn. You know how electricians get. Tended to looks like all the pictures we have of him on file. He tends to wear and a like he tends to wear like a khaki work uniform or like a denim work uniform. But you know how HPs go as go once you're in the city, all bets are off. Things but yeah. unless things go sideways, that should be the person that you're looking for. Red hair. Copy that, Control. Uh, ready to proceed to the blue when, whenever you are, my friend. All right. Well, get ready because you're about to jump. And um, he hangs up. You hear the, the dial tone. Go ahead and make me a roll. Make me an access roll, which is going to be a number of D6s equal to your access stat. The number you want to hit is an 11. So I'm going to sum the dice together. Yeah, add them together. Okay. Perfect. Well. You land. Perfect. You you step back, and the ground the ground around the payphone, like the uh, the uh, hole opens up underneath the payphone, and the payphone falls through. And you look down this hole, and there's no payphone. And it opens up further, and you are dropped into this hole, and you feel yourself falling, and falling, and falling. And you're walking into a building in the Blue City. The city stretches out before you in all directions. Um, the high, you know the high-rise cityscapes look familiar, but uh, also like like you almost could identify what city it is. But as soon as you start to start to think that you know it, it changes a little bit. It's never what you expect. You see why it gets the name Blue City because all it's just the it's a it's perpetually in a state of blue twilight. There are people uh, moving about with their faces to the ground. They 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 don't appear to you in any sort of real. You can't really see them in detail per se, but they're like shuffling through their day to day lives. Sure, like you know the the trench coat fedora holding a newspaper kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You um. Okay. You're walking into this building, this tenement high rise, surrounded by nondescript gray looking buildings, all bathed in this blue twilight. I, I kind of, I'm sorry. I, I kind of imagine something like a like a kind of a brutalist architecture kind of style building. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so you walk in. There is an empty. Uh, like doorman's desk or security desk. There's no one there. There's some papers scattered about. You you turn and look outside and you see an elect an unmarked like utility van is parked outside. Oh, like oh, like like you know something like uh general general appliance Inc. Or whatever, discussing. It's just like a, it's just like a white van, and it's sort of like chunks of it are rusting off, revealing the primer underneath, and there's just a ladder on top. So it's like not even really like a marked van. It's just kind of there, but like you can tell because it's got a ladder on top, and there's big hunks of wire on all on like different parts of it that it's some sort of utility repair service van. Just oh. not a just not a reputable w- one. <laughs> yeah, what does my uh, what does my instinct tell me? What is my gut saying when I see this van, knowing that this this may fall under uh, Horace Albertson's mo? I will say what you, um what you know is that it is a utility van. It is clearly run down. It is not from a reputable source. If you uh, looking at this van, you can absolutely tell that it's not a corporate. This is this is a one person operation. This utility van, whatever utility it happens to be. But if you want more pointed information, I'm going to have to ask for a an instinct roll. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, does this roll behave just like the previous one, where rolling all things? rolls moving forward will operate in the same way? Okay, so it got to be an eleven. Okay. 
Perfect. Uh, yeah, 16. Perfect. Yeah, so you, um, you're looking at it, and then suddenly you're, like, inside the van. Or, like, at the doorway. The doors are already open. You're looking through it. You're, you find electrician's tools. This is an electrician's van. So, like, wire cutters, extension cords, all that kind of stuff. You find papers, but you can't read them. They are just squiggles and swirls and shapes that are moving around. You, 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 you focus on them real tightly, but they, there's no words on them. There's just squiggles. But you know, you know that this is Herb Albertson's van. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, so I, I guess the van's parked outside. I'm looking at it. So I'm, I'm going to actually like look up at the building uh, and try to see if there's any kind of like floors or something like that that don't have any lights on them or lights that may be like blinking in and out. Uh, perhaps maybe where he's where uh, what floor maybe some sort of electrical activity might be. On. There are. Or notably any floors under like scaffolding construction. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. There are a number of floors with the lights on. There are a number of floors with the lights off. It actually, you look at it for a while, and you can see that you you count them, and it's something like every third and a half light is off. Like like you you can see it all the way up. It's like three and a half, so it's three and then four and then three, all the way around the building, with the exception of about the. 47th light which is on but flickering oh well uh i i kind of squint at that room and uh i'm going to proceed to go back into the building and make my way to the to that one yeah briefly i wanted to cover what you had on you as far as things which is yeah you have your lasuna device which is a small button sized like a small pin sized device which is used for containing hostile personalities. The way it works is you plant it on them and you turn it to the right and that takes care of it. You have your standard issue black suit, white shirt, black tie, your sunglasses, and your standard issue mystery agent question mark pin, like a lapel pin. To get any other equipment, you can make an access roll or a, yeah, you can make an access roll, contact control, at, tell them what you need, and then depend, and then you'll receive an item which will grant you a bonus to future rolls. Oh, awesome! Then uh, prior to making my way up the stairs or whatever to that room, uh, I'm going to go over to the empty front desk, and um, I'm going to hope there's a telephone there that's working. Oh, I forgot the most important mechanic of Lasuna. Mm-hmm. Every time you make a roll the total number that you roll adds to your heart rate. There is a okay, way so. to reduce your heart rate by uh, meditating. But yeah, every time you make a roll, that the total number adds to your heart rate. When you're in your target heart rate, you are no longer bound by your stats, essentially. You can add any awesome. number of dice to any, to any roll. But keeping in mind that that total still adds to your heart rate. So if you roll seven dice and you roll like 50, which is not possible on, which is not possible on seven dice, but you get the idea. If you add, if you roll like seven dice, you add that like, so it's like I can do a really cool stunt, but it risks putting me into dangers, danger territory. Oh, that's fantastic. And the other, the other half of it is every time you roll a six, you get what is called a commendation point. Commendation points allow you to fuel your, I think they fuel your I think they fuel your techniques, which I'm gonna look up right now. Yes, your techniques, which in this case is intuition. So when you when you can add dice to intellect rolls, to instinct rolls when when following gut instincts, you can spend a commendation point and add an additional dice. That still adds to your heart rate, however. Ooh, okay. The the other thing you can do is there are a few things you can do with your techniques 
One thing you can do is you can drop your you can spend accommodation point when you're in a safe spot like you are right now to drop your heart rate by 10 as you meditate for a little while. Okay. Well, uh, going back at my previous two rolls, uh, I just reached the minimum threshold for my target okay. heart rate. So I think I'm I think I'm going to explore what that does. So I'm okay right now for for spending it, but um, I would like to see if there's a phone at the front desk inside this building. There is a rotary phone which you recognize as a con- as a company planted control phone. And you see that there's also like oh. a dinky digital phone that somebody somebody somehow still purchased despite the fact that it's a digital phone in what you assume to be 2016. <laughs> awesome. Uh yeah, I'm gonna use the uh I'm gonna I'm gonna use the control uh designated. So phone. you're gonna make an access roll using your X and how many dice do you want to roll for this? Knowing you uh, have to keep an, you have to hit an eleven. Four's good. Roll me four dice. Perfect. You hit the eleven. Add that to your heart rate. Mm-hmm. You pick up the phone. You'd actually go to dial, but you don't have to. What's up, killer? Oh, it just automatic. It automatically connects. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, control. Uh, I'm gonna need uh, a couple things. I'm gonna need a control key. I'm gonna need like a skeleton key for the rooms in this in this building. Totally. Uh, totally. It's already on your person. Cool. And uh, I'm going to need uh, a set either. I'm gonna need a small firearm. All right. Make me another access roll. Well, you can choose for the fire. What What else are you asking? Like, what all are you asking for? Fin- keep. Uh, I was gonna ask for either a firearm or a stun baton. Stun baton. Let's go with stun baton. That sounds cooler. Okay, so I'm gonna ask for one more roll. One of these two is mm-hmm. successful. You can choose which one, and that's gonna get you a plus four item. So, would you like a plus four skeleton key or a plus four stun baton? Ooh, I'd rather have the skeleton key. So, what that does is when making rolls related to the skeleton key. Anytime you're making a like, if anytime you use the skeleton key, you get a plus four bonus to the roll that does not add to your heart rate. Okay. Okay. I see how it works. Cool. Yeah, it's like a free die. Okay. And it's based on the number of dice that you roll. So, so it's so if you had rolled only rolled two dice, you would get a plus two skeleton key. Yeah. So make me another roll for your okay. stun baton. I'm going to use a 46 again. 12. Perfect. You get a plus four stun baton. And add 12 more to your heart rate. Mm Mm-hmm. Cool. And they just show up on my person? The skeleton key shows up on your person. Skeleton keys on you. Skeleton keys on you. Uh, Stun baton. Hold on. And he hits some key. You hear him hitting some keys. Sure. I imagine it's like inside my suit jacket. You know, like. Uh, stun baton's in the awesome. van. I, I think that should be okay. I'm not sensing another per, uh, personality in there. Anything else, killer? <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> I know you do, Control. Uh, no, that, that'll do it for me for now. Copacetic. And he hangs up. All right, take, yeah, take care. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go pick up my, uh, st- my stun baton. Uh, I'm gonna try to go to the back of the van. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, you're inside the van, you pick it up, you find yourself back in the lobby again. So, like, there's a brief flash of you grabbing it, mm-hmm. and then you're back in the lobby. Uh, I'm going to look for access to an elevator or stairs. If, if an elevator is not available, I'm going to take the elevator if it is. There is an elevator, but to get it to come to your, like, you're looking at it, there are, like, nine buttons there's like a block of nine buttons that all point arrows in different directions. So if you wanted to get the elevator, I would ask for an access roll. There's also stairs that have some police tape on them, but you could push through the police tape without making the roll. But you would have to take the Ooh. stairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm just going to take the stairs then. And go up to the 47th floor. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mutter myself, I wish I asked control for a, a glass of water. So you're walking, you pass the first floor, and the second floor, and floor blue, and floor X, and your parents' house, and your third grade classroom, 
and you're at the 47th floor. The door... The door is shut. You, you, you move the hand... Like, you push it, it is, it is locked shut. Oh, I have... Uh, expecting this, I'm going to go ahead and use my, uh, my skeleton okay. key. Okay, make me an instinct roll. Add four to that. And then choose how many dice you want to roll. Okay, uh, I'm going to choose to use... I'm going to choose to use three dice. You succeed easily. You, you, you fiddle with it, and you notice that there's no lock on it. It's, it's one of those doors with the big bar that you, have, that you, like, that you push, and it opens that way. So it doesn't seem oh, like the skeleton key okay. should fit in it, but you push, you put the skeleton key in your hand, you push it against the bar, and the door opens... Easily and silently. Cool. And how old does this building look, by the way? I don't think it was established. Old. It is an old, rundown tenement. Yeah, okay, so I imagine sort of like that kind of faux Victorian kind of wallpaper, you know what I mean? But it's all like, you know, plastered coming off and stuff like that. There's like old newspapers in the hall. Real ugly, okay, garish, cool. like green and oh. brown carpet. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. you got it. Okay. So you're moving through this hallway and you're walking and as long as it took you to walk that to walk though all those floors of stairs, it feels like it's taking you twice as long to just walk along this hallway. Considering and considering that from the outside you could tell that there was about maybe like six rooms. You're just walking and walking. Ooh. Uh is do I hear the sounds of any sort of like activity coming from any room? Yeah, they're shuffling in various rooms. You're hearing, like, the noises of apartment life. You're hearing sure. construction outside. You're hearing, like, just noises, city noises. You see a lot of newspapers, cool. like, uh, next to the, next to, like, lined up next to doors, like, waiting to be taken in or taken out. A few waste baskets are there, like, filled with tied off trash bags, that kind of thing. Can I uh, can I trust my gut here to pick the right door? Yeah, make me an instinct roll. Okay, I'm gonna use uh, four dice here. Uh, can I actually use my intuition? Um, so the way that works that is you make the roll. If you do not succeed at the roll, you can spend a commendation point to add your intuition and just make another roll, add an extra dice to that to like bump up that. Total. Okay, then. So Cool, then I'm, actually, I'm going to roll three dice instead, and then maybe bump it up if I need to. Perfect, and you get a commendation point. I'm outside of my target range now. Okay, let me let me pull up exactly what happens. Because that means that things get difficult. Mm -hmm. You may want to take a few moments and meditate. Yeah, I might want to spend one of those uh, commendation points. Yeah, what does it feel like when, um, as I push myself to do these things, do I feel like my heart getting faster even when I'm in my target rate? Does you know, does my target rate make me feel as a person different? Yes. So the way it feels is when you're at your resting heart rate, when you're in the green zone, you feel mm -hmm. calm. You feel the the chemical cocktail that they have injected you with to like put you under. You feel that – like you can feel that working and you feel calm and content and peaceful. When you're in your target range, you feel equally like you are getting a really good workout. Like you feel – like you feel like – you feel the burn, but you also feel mm -hmm. like Superman. Like you feel <laughs> like you could just do anything. There's no limit to what you do, especially when you're when you're in the city. You just feel like you control. You feel like you own the city. Yeah. It okay. Yeah. Kind of like what I imagine. Then when you have like a runner's high, or like you when you're exercising, that's like massive second wind, and you're like, oh man, I have so much energy, and this. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was feeling pretty good climbing those stairs, uh, opening that door, and walk down this hallway. And then maybe... And then once it passes that, once it passes that, then yeah. it starts to feel like you're having a panic attack. It starts to feel like you're having an anxiety attack or a panic attack where you start to get, you start, your hands start to shake, you start to sweat. You look around, it like the room, the, the hallway starts to sweat. 
everything is getting a little wavy. Yeah, I would like to take a moment to um, meditate and kind of like get a, like get a hold of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're in this hallway and you, you just lay lean against a wall. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, like the one arm. You know that like kind of like classic lean where someone just goes against the wall like with their forearm and like brace themselves and put their like, head on their on that uh, other side of their wrist uh, kind of thing and like yep. close their eyes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a quick moment of a respite and that would bring me down. Does it take any roll or anything? Just to, spends to spend a con- you spend a point or, and you okay. can uh, I think you have three at the moment that you awesome. think of three at the moment or f- three at the moment you can spend. So you spend yeah. one of them, it drops your heart rate down ten beats per minute. So where uh, are you back in mm-hmm. your target? Are you feeling good? Yeah, I'm I'm back in my target. You actually you're leaning and you see normally you can't read. It, like in the city but you you're looking at the wall and the the tacky yellowing wallpaper like the floral designs start to arrange into letters that just say like easy agent easy killer <laughs> uh yeah i um i smirk and you know shake my head as i uh pick myself off the wall uh straighten out my suit and stuff um Check my pockets, make sure I got my still got my skeleton key and everything, and um, get ready to to find okay. the door. Okay. And the last thing to note about heart rate is, you when you're past your target heart rate, you tend like you're okay. You you feel you feel like you're starting to have a panic attack, but you're okay. But once you pass your mm-hmm. maximum heart rate, everything you do becomes mm-hmm. risky, and everything you do can result in injury and death. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, okay. everything you do becomes what is called a risky action. So you want to make sure your your heart rate. You want to keep an eye on your heart rate to make sure it doesn't go above your maximum. Okay. Yeah. Right now, I'm just for uh, the audience knows I'm at 139. Yeah. Okay. So you're and your maximum is 195. So you so you're okay. Even if you pass your target, you're okay. It just that's when it starts to feel like you're going your heart's beating a little bit too fast. And then once you hit 195, you're in the red zone, and that's when things. That's when every. That's when you risk having like a heart attack. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I imagine this whole like game of this game was a movie. Uh, maybe there's like this. Uh, whenever I go up a different level or whatever, the the you know the heartbeat. We hear the heartbeat sound kind of change a little bit or something. What I'm envisioning is that like in the same way that you saw the letters form of like easy killer. You start to see like when mm-hmm. you when your heart rate ke- keeps going up, you see that wallpaper and like the pattern on the carpet literally turn into heartbeats, like heart rate monitors, and it starts yeah. going more and more erratically. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's almost like pulsing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So you are outside of this room that you saw the flickering light from on the forty seventh floor. You're calm. You're in your target heart rate. You feel like you can conquer the world. Awesome. What's your next move? I'm going to I'm going to quickly uh, open the door uh, to try to get a surprise on the electrician. In that case, make me a force roll. Yeah. Uh, In my target heart rate range, I'm going to roll four dice. Perfect. Add 16 to your heart rate, which I believe takes you out of your target. Yes. Yes, it does. So your heart's starting to pound a little bit, and it's starting to feel like you're going just a little bit too hard. But you're still feeling like you could. You're still feeling like you can accomplish the mission. But it's starting to. You're starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah. So like I do that kind of uh, like military or like special ops kind of thing where you know you 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 quickly check your surroundings and my sun batons out, and you know I, I look around. Uh, what do so I? So this see is a ramshackle apartment. There is, like, a table, a can of beans, like, open, and there's, like, a spoon next to it. There's just some clothes, all of them denim, like, denim shirts and jeans are, like, scattered around. The TV is playing some cartoon in a different language. It's an old, and it's an old, old TV. It is, like, a 70s black and white dial TV. And it's playing some like 
Ukrainian Soviet era propaganda cartoon. And you see very like a map of not the city, but a city. You see the map of a city with some like push pins in it. Mm. Everything feels like it has a thin layer of like sweat or grease on it. Yeah, grime. Yeah, yeah, totally. But no sign. Uh, of what the you see is no, no what you see is control. is that window that you were looking into is open, and like the the curtains around it are blowing. Oh damn! Uh, then uh, my first. My first instinct would be to uh, go to the window and kind of like look around and, and see. You look like, around. You are on the ground. F- you look around and now you like you look out the window and you're on the ground floor. What? <laughs> you see the you see uh, a man, red haired, pudgy, denim workman's uniform, gloves, running to a van, running to that van outside. Scar. Was there a scar? When he looked back at me, uh, yes, was there a scar a burn on his mark, forehead? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Burn mark. Yeah. Damn. And uh, he's sprinting to his van, so I, I immediately chase off after him. Uh, Stun baton goes to like full. Th- um, and as you're re- chasing him, you see that the footsteps that he's planting are good. Like the the cement, he's leaving footsteps in the cement as he's running of like wet cement. Like the cement that he's running on is wet. But it's just like it's just on his oh. footprints. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a way for me to avoid his footprints? Uh, so yeah, that- yeah, yeah. You're able to run around them easily. What I will say is, if you want to catch up to the van while also dodging these like these like melted cement footprints, that will take. We'll call it a force roll. Well, if if you don't mind, then um, if I if if I don't want to catch up to him. Uh, could I propose that uh, I do some? I kind of mo- take this move and turn it back on him a little bit. Uh, could I make it so the sub- can or or is that weird? Or or can I not do that? No, no, no. Here, like, let me like tell me what you're th- tell me what you're thinking sure. because this is yeah. this is a weird place. It's a yeah. weird city. What I'm thinking is if he can make the cement around him kind of wet, I'm gonna make the cement around the van kind of wet, and I'm gonna sink the the tires a little bit so he can't get away in it, and then you know force him to run on foot. Make me an access roll. Okay. All right. So I'm out of my target. So I have to roll a uh, 3d6. Yeah. Ooh, I don't get it. Okay. So here's here's how it works. Mm-hmm. You can take the failure. In this case, it was – in this case, the access roll was for getting – was for um, like – Enabling con- enabling control to see what was going on so that they could essentially, like, pop his tires remotely. Mm-hmm. So you could push that roll. Roll 3d6 again and add it to your to your initial result. Or just take the failure because the thing is, if you roll those 3d6, you're going to succeed no matter what. But you then add somewhere between 3 and 18 beats to your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So if I, if I fail, though, then do I have to do that force test to uh to catch up to him then um no if you fail then question. the tires yeah then the tires are fine and he's going to drive to drive off and you're gonna have to tail him another way got it okay uh yeah then i'm gonna have to push myself to make sure this works okay so i'm gonna roll that extra 3d6 seven okay okay so add 16 to your heart rate mm-hmm and yeah, he gets in and he starts to drive, but the tires are thumping and they've been deflated. They've been deflated along the side of the van. It just like you see in rust, you see in rust, a winky, a winky emoticon <laughs> and then it disappears. Awesome. Yeah. So like the, the, the van is now kind of like clunking along. Um, yeah. Cool. I wonder if I'm going to need myself a car to catch up to it, or can I run up to it? Is it going slow enough? Because did I disable it slow enough? I can run up to it. Yeah, you can run up to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push myself and, and, and catch up to the back of the van and kind of open it and like jump on board. Okay, so you open the back of the van, and there is, you open it, and it's exactly like you thought, like you remember it. 
There are wires, wire cutters, toolboxes. You don't remember the other electrician being in there. Uh-oh. So, yeah, so I, I open... Okay, uh, what, what do they look like? They are a middle-aged woman in sort of similar work person's attire, that sort of denim two-piece outfit with the gloves. And they just look at you and blank-eyed, we're going on a fishing trip. You're not supposed to be here. No, I have to be here. We're taking the van to the fishing trip so that we could we can catch the fish. And uh, do I see who's driving this van? Yes, you can see that Herb is driving the van. He is not paying attention to the person, the personality in the back seat. Ooh. Um, part of me wants to see if Control can take over the van and like swerve it over so it crashes. But part of um, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna I'm gonna go first with uh. All right. Uh, I'm going to push past this person and rush up to the driver and try to stun him. Okay. Make me, yeah, make me a force roll. Yeah, totally. All right. Uh, this is bad because my force is bad. Let's see what happens. And add four nine. to that. Okay, yeah, perfect. You succeed. Add nine to your heart rate because oh, you're adding yeah, four with your stun baton. Awesome. You stun him with the baton. He The car spins out. You make a move to protect the personality in the back seat, and they're gone. So it's just the two of you in this van that is spinning out. Is there – oh, is there a way I can get uh, a hold of control right now and to be like – make sure this van lands, um, you know, in a way that, that – you know, it, like on its wheels, right, or whatever is left? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. You – you know the – um there's the ham – like the ham radio. You're mm-hmm. looking at it and it has – a it has a ro- like it's got ham radio but it has a rotary dial on the front and a phone on top like a phone uh cradle on top or handset awesome. hand or hand piece on top cool so i kind of picture this going in somewhat of a slow motion and as things start kind of like as the as the the van starts to tumble around things kind of start flying up in the air and i like i see this i'm like god i love control and i you know i, I grab that and uh and 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 scream into it uh, you know, make sure this thing lands on its feet. Okay. As I make my access, yeah. Oh, just got it. Uh, eleven. Okay. Yeah. Access. You 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 say exactly that. Access responds with <sighs> fine, and like the car. You feel the car had been spinning out. Now you feel it, mm-hmm. like flip repeatedly and you are you are tossed around a little bit but it does land safely like upright so you're like tossed around a little bit take a commendation point because you got a six and Mm -hmm. yeah you are you are thrown around pretty heavily but the car the van eventually lands upright awesome i imagine it kind of like veered off of um or like over one of those like guardrails or something like that, or like broke through and it kind of like moved over or like onto like a sidewalk yeah. uh, into like an alley. And yeah, awesome. Just before you hang up, you you control goes to hang up the phone and you just hear him say, "It's always something." And then they hang up. Yeah. Then then they hang up. Then you hear dial tone. Damn. And uh, I quickly look around to see where the um, where Horace got off to. He's pretty beat up. He's in the driver's seat, unbuckling his seatbelt, like twitching from the stun baton and like punching at the door to ki- like kick it open. Awesome. I'm going to I'm going to try to plant the Lasuna device on him and turn it right. OK. Uh, make me that's going to be a four. I'm going to call that a force roll as you try to like jam him as you try to like essentially sock him with the device. Yeah. As you're doing that, like he's fit. He's kicking at the door. His body is starting to litter his it's starting to you're starting to smell smoke and sulfur as like you see his skin starting to blister and pop and his hair is starting to simmer oh no i failed it uh i'm gonna so i am now over my max at this point okay 
Uh, but I, but how far I am over my max, I'm going to have to roll again. Yeah, right. I'm and it doesn't it doesn't nine. impact it. But now it is now for two reasons because he is starting to shift into a full fledged hostile personality, and because you are past your medical your um, maximum heart rate. Every failed roll, starting with this one, or starting with your next roll, every time you fail, your let me check exactly what I what it is. I want it. Something drops, and if it drops to zero, that's it. Oh, okay. It's do or die time, quite literally. If I've been doing the math right, uh, after that additional seven, I should be at two o five as my mac as my uh, current heart rate. Yeah, then any subsequent roll becomes risky. Failing a risky action reduces your force or in- or instinct by one die. In most case, okay. yeah, it'll reduce it by one die. If either one drops to zero, you are imme- you must immediately make an emergency access roll to eject, or you're done. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So you succeeded. Mm-hmm. I planted the liquid of advice on him as he's turning into the hostile. Yeah. He ignites in flame, like human torch style, except his body does not seem immune to it. So he is smoldering, his skin is falling off. It's like burning away, and he's like... Disintegrating? Yeah, well, it's that he's turning into this fire thing, Mm. and as you turn it right, it's black, and he gets off. (laughs) They're lying to you! And then he's gone. Absorbed into the Lasuna device. Oh, man. So is it like this disgusting, fiery capture of a Pokeball? Like into this little like device? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, basically. Basically exactly (laughs) like that. And now you are alone in this van that is badly fire damaged. The um, the phone that was on the ham radio is like melted and charred and broken. And you just hear from it. Get out. Get get out. Get out now. Get out, killer, and but like you go to like mess with it, you go to mess with the phone, and it's too hot to even touch. So the last thing you're gonna have to do is find another like rotary phone or something. You're gonna have to like move around the city to find your thing so you can call access to get you out. Ooh. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to use my my. I, I don't want to say like I want to use my instinct to find the best, the closest phone. No, 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 no. That's oh. exactly what. That's exactly what I want you oh, okay. to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna Make say. Well, uh, I'm gonna. I'm thinking where a phone would be. Uh, the first thing I would think would be like a gas station. Um, sure. And I'm going to use my instinct to figure this out then. Okay. And this is a risky action. Okay. You succeed. You find a gas station. You find a phone at the get. Like there's a payphone at the gas station. You know that it's the kind that you need. You make a move for it. Make me the access roll to jump out of the city. Sure. As I as are were there any cars at the gas station? Were they like all like empty or like bombed out or also charred or something like that? Yeah, every every car you're passing is burnt to a crisp. Oh. The the walls of the buildings are covered in soot and they the buildings themselves are starting to waver with heat. Like everything is is smoldering and weight like heat is causing them to like weight like you know what I mean like oh, heat yeah. mirage yeah totally and like everything is burnt and burning and the smell like you you see no smoke but the smell of smoke is overwhelming Ugh. yeah uh, I'm I'm gonna grab that uh, I'm I'm probably gonna cough a little bit and as I as I grab that um uh rotary phone I'm, okay I'm gonna, so I'm gonna use my access uh oh. Um, so that was a failure. Okay. So what happens is you pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. You, you call, you tell control to like jump you out. Mm-hmm. You hear the familiar control voice and he says to you, I know there's no form and no labels to put on to this thing we keep. And then he hangs up. So I'm like, control, listen to me, listen to me. And like, I just hear this. Oh. And then the, yeah, you hear that. And then the payphone itself melts like slowly and awkwardly but it just melts you don't need to make another um you i'm gonna say you don't need to make another roll to find another payphone because there's at least one other in the gas station 
Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe that was the one that's like outside the gas station. Now I'm gonna like go behind the counter yeah. or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's a person. There's an attendant behind the counter who's standing there, and he's looking at you, and he he sees you go for the phone at the counter, and he's like, "That's my mother's. Don't touch that." I'd be like, "One second, it's an emergency. It's my car." Car? I don't. I you don't know, have I, a I've, car. I have my I have my hand out. You know, look. I know. I, I'm trying right. to. You know, like what? Just one second. One second. One moment. And I'm right. going to grab the phone. Yeah. Okay. So make me that roll, and if you can feel free to push this one, if you if you uh, do not hit eleven. Yeah. Um, remind me one more time about pushing. What do I have to do? Is that is that just if I fail, roll again? Yeah. 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 But um, this time it's a risky X. Ex- Perfect. Oh my god. You rolled a twelve. <laughs> you you make the call. You wake up. You are on the slab. You 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 thrash against the wrist thing like you thrash against the manacles with the wrist for a minute you feel the second uh chemical cocktail like inject into your iv and a few moments later you are calm there's a med tech uh is standing next to you and he's like gum <laughs> am i like covered in sweat yeah you are drenched in oh, sweat yeah. uh whew. Is the guy offering me gum, the voice I hear on the phone? Is it killer? No, it's a different oh, voice. Different You've actually voice. never met that particular voice. Okay. Myth- mythography is kept very separate from mystery agents to ensure that they are pers- to ensure that they are kept um, – Sure. Uh, operational security. Yeah. 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 Okay. Totally. Okay. Uh, I, I, I bat the guys uh, – you know, I'm, I'm a gesture of holding some gum or something out of the way. And I'm like, huh, 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 huh. and you're yeah. laying there in this empty room, yeah. and you are you're surveying it, and thank fucking Christ, it is exactly the way you remember it. The concrete slab that you're resting on, the manacles, the payphone in the corner. Wait. And that's game. Wait. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> no, we got more time. Let's keep going. <laughs> that's game. Oh, man. Um, so, yes, you successfully completed the mission. You um, did not receive a proper commendation, but um, yeah. you do. You would receive a technique from from a direct deputy director or vice director Frost Forrester. Mm-hmm. Gives you special commendation. You are everything is back to normal. You think. Wow. This game is awesome. This right? Is, this is like the Inception game. Oh, it's a little bit Inception, and there's a little bit – we didn't really get into it, but there's like yeah. a you know, little bit of paranoia in yeah. there because there's yeah, like exactly. different clearance levels and stuff. It's super cool. I love this oh, game. Yeah. I'm. S- oh, yeah. I love I love the intrigue. And it, it's one that I've wanted to – yeah. I, it's one I've wanted to be on to on the show for a while, oh, well, so this is oh, – I am honored. That so well. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, man. Uh, my only, the only complaint I, I had was that you kept rolling so well. I didn't get to real, yeah, I didn't I'm get sorry, to really mess games. with you because <laughs> opening up the curtain a little bit, there's a mechanic called static where every time you fail a roll, it increases and things oh, get man. weirder. And it's like, even if you push the dice, like the static still goes up and then like surreal things start happening. One of the things they suggest is that you encounter a personality. So when you opened up the car, there was a lady there. There's an attendant when you go in the gas station. Control is supposed to start out really friendly and get like aggressive and mean and confusing. And I was like, and you kept rolling so well that I only got to do a little bit of it, but I, I was so happy oh, with what yeah, I got no, to I do nonetheless. Did a fantastic job from if that's all I, I know, because I we were using roll twenty, like the rolls are there. Um yeah, I know i I felt weird that like it was just kind of like I kept succeeding, so we kept going forward. But I could see there was so much undercurrent. Like I could I could literally see that when you were describing things. Like, oh boy, there's way more here. Yeah, yeah, it was so and, good. Uh, I love it. It's, I think it I might be it. weird, but, you know, I played this guy like he's a trained person, so it wasn't, like, super confused. Like, mm-hmm. oh, man, why is this all going on? No, I think that's that's kind of – I think that's good. Like, I And it's sort of natural whether or not you kind of know that what the game's about. It's kind of natural to gravitate yeah. more towards that. 
it's one of those how you re- react to the experiment is part of the experiment <laughs> yeah. things. Oh, yeah. Like, if you know you're being observed. <laughs> like, if you know this is this is this thing, this is what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's more I've, – I've found in, like, reading and, like, the games of this that I've played and stuff, people more naturally, especially when they don't actually know what the game's about, people more naturally gravitate towards, like, I'm a trained agent. I know what I'm doing than the opposite because they – they don't want to seem like they don't oh, know yeah. what they're doing, so, and it plays into the narrative yeah, so well. Absolutely. Well, I've never, so I have never played this game until now, um, but I, I did hear that it was something Inception need like, and um, I mean the just the front cover is tells you everything you need to. Um, yeah. But oh my god, oh, the artwork, it, the design, the artwork is so good. Yeah. It's so. No, good. this is fantastic. This is this is really cool. I would love to do. I would love to do more of this. I love Lasuna. Now this is. Just seeing what oh, it could do. Oh, it's super you know, cool. That heart rate mechanic, adding stuff. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Oh, and I, I love the heart rate mechanic. It may add so much tension because, like, you hit that target rate and then you're like, oh, well, this is going to be easy. And then you pass it and you're yeah. like, wait. And then you pass the maximum and suddenly, like, you're in a death spiral. It's um, cool. My question about the game, maybe you could help me real quick. Um, when you, Are there penalties for meditating too long or, or like... Can you- no, no, no. It's just that you have to have a commendation point to okay. do it, and you have you only get commendation points by rolling sixes. So, so there's no guarantee at any point that you're going to be able to, and you're only allowed to do it in like calm situations. Like once you broke through that door, I was not going to allow you to yeah. meditate. Okay, that's what I figured. I, I I was wondering if there was something that was mechanically preventing you from just resting or something like that. But yeah, that makes sense. It's just um yeah, in a situation where you wouldn't be able to like meditate for a moment, like, that's really it. That's like what is sort of the yeah, key like thing. Like breathing exercise stuff. Yeah, get yourself back under control. Right. Cool. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Eric, thank you for coming off. Thank you coming from Party yeah, of One. Thank you so much. This has been so good. This was really good. Real quick before we wrap up, where can people find you online? Sure. Uh, I'm on I'm on the internet at uh, youtube.com slash Eric Volgaris. I'm on Twitter at Eric Volgaris, and I'm on twitch.tv at Eric Volgaris, uh, where I do a bunch of one shot shows and as well as a couple games of Blades in the Dark by John Harper. Thank thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a blast, and I'm gonna throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Yeah. Take it future me. Thanks, Pass Me, and thanks to Killer for coming on the... Eric. Your name is Eric, right? Thanks to Eric for coming on to the show. That was really fun. And speaking of really fun, you should really check out Once Upon a Game. I really enjoy it. It's super fun to watch games play live. Eric is a wonderful storyteller. He gets a great group of people. Highly recommended. You can find that at twitch.tv slash ericvulgaris, or just follow the link in the show notes. You can also follow Eric on Twitter at Eric Volgaris and head over to his page at ericvolgaris.com where you can see actual player reports, links to Once Upon a Game sessions, and more. Eric, wake up! You have to eject! Wake up! You can follow this show on Twitter at Party of One Pod, like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast, and if you really enjoyed the show, consider telling a friend. It really means a lot to me and it really helps the show grow and get bigger and better and do cooler things, and I deeply appreciate it. Party of One is produced by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. This episode edited by Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Mega Ran featuring the D&D Sluggers. Until next time, party people, thanks for listening, and party on! Never gonna die.